You and I with Rashmi Shetty is a simple attempt of bringing in stories of people you and I can draw inspiration from. Ordinary folks, extraordinary lives, their uniqueness and individuality that make them interesting to talk to and to listen to. A reaffirmation of the fact, open your eyes wider, the world is far more beautiful when we acknowledge the presence of both you and I. Twenty-three-year-old Divan Shukumar and twenty-four-year-old Samyak Jain are graduates from IIT Madras and are guests for today's episode. They are the co-founders of Involve, an international award-winning social enterprise that aspires to create student-driven learning via peer teaching. Enterprising, motivated, passionate, they both operate from abundance. And I love it. They sure prove India is in safe hands. I love your dreams because for me, I can see two bright young fellow Indians. So our country is in safe hands for sure. Who are humble, who are very reassured, operate from abundance and can see that life has a way of giving back when you operate from abundance. But what is amazing for me is their journey began in IIT Chennai. How did it start? Where are they from? And how has it been since is what we're going to find out in this episode of You and I with Rashmi Shetty. So Samyak, we'll start with you first. If you can start your journey, go slightly back from out of IIT Chennai where have you come from and what brought you to IIT Chennai? I, I was born and brought up in uh, Patna, Bihar. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in a joint family. Mm -hmm. So I have like, uh, my father's are four brothers mm -hmm. and I think I had one of the most, most amazing childhood of my life. I just feel that, uh, I think that that has been, I think the most amazing part for me. I always, mm -hmm. I like from, from the beginning, I think in the, in the school, I was always very studious. Mm -hmm. I always was in top five of the class and I think I, I never gave a thought, okay, what do I have to become as such? But there, 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 there was one of, one of my cousin brother who was into IIT Guwahati and he used to get a lot of respect. I, I, I think I was in ninth or uh, eighth or ninth grade. I didn't know IIT till then. I'm like, okay, he is into IIT, uh, something big. He's getting a lot of respect and i'm like okay i'll just i just want that i didn't have an aim to become an engineer so yeah just just after 10th grade the parents were asking okay what do you want to take science or commerce my brother my own brother wanted me to take commerce because he was from that background he wanted me to join and start a business with him i'm like no i don't i'm not interested as such i'll go with science because i'm like i like maths a lot so i chose that and and uh, i think it was a tough decision to move to delhi uh, because the entire from my birth i have been living in my joint family so i had to go to delhi live alone with, with one of my cousin brother who was also preparing with me and yeah i think i think that two years taught me a lot specifically taught that iit preparation is not about going into iit or an engineering college it's about the journey it's about the two years uh, journey the struggle uh, the highs the lows staying away from family and then also keeping very yourself very very motivated towards the goal because of which you have came thousand kilometers far from your home i think that was the most amazing sort of two years um, of my of my life because of which i was i was very sure that if i do not get into iit i will not have anything to lose if i will go into any engineering college i'll do something good i was very sure about that because that was the confidence that i got from uh, the 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 teachers uh, from there. The, the coaching institute is called Vidya Mandir classes. Very, very grateful to them. And yeah, fortunately got into uh, IIT Madras. Again, never thought of which college, which stream. I just wanted the uh, the top seven IITs are there. 
I'm like you like if I get any of them I will be fine. I think I got IIT Madras chemical engineering and like yes and there yeah that that's it my journey till IIT Madras it. Okay and one more secret I want I hope you'll at least re- reveal it by the end of the conversation Samya. There is a huge connection between Bihar and IIT and the yeah. civil services. <laughs> How is it that Bihar is able to crack IITs and the civil services like no other state has maybe if you feel like it you can tell me offline but do give it a thought okay? I have one point which I'll, I'll cover later yeah yeah okay and you Dibanshu uh, if you can tell us your journey from where it began and how did it reach IIT Chennai uh, I actually uh, I am from Bihar same Bihar as well like so I guess proper time from Kerala I had a very basic schooling till I think my 8th grade uh, in the sense that I just used to go school which was uh, alongside my house did not really had a lot of aspiration at that point in time did well in school like some uh, was say so subject wise uh, interest was there i think i had one teacher uh, who was there who really pushed me to always think about things in an innovative manner so it would more be like it was not really a tuition after school hours i would just go and sit in his house and stay there for 4 5 hours he wouldn't teach anything it would just be like if i had any questions i would just reach out to him and he would answer and the questions could be about anything it was he was not a subject expert so he was essentially i think a ex uh, air force and he was an engineer uh, himself uh, had a very uh, amazing career he liked me a lot so that that is i think it was the seed to think about different things and uh, In ninth class, I actually got into uh, one of the schools which are considered the best in the city. Very difficult to get into. Uh, my father never thought that he, we would do that because we didn't could not afford it at that point in time. So it was really uh, good to see that we got there, and that essentially changed the trajectory in which we were thinking. Found a friend who uh, was thinking about IIT. I had one team member, a family member who had done IIT, my cousin brother, but uh, that wasn't really much of a matter of thought to aspire for IIT at that point in time. but when both of us were deciding that we would want to do something we thought that okay let's give this a try and we also came to delhi same uh, institute that some have talked about but in that time we did not know each other so uh, yeah and that was essentially how we sort of prepared for iit we were very uh, competitive my i and my friend it used to be fierce in that manner and we really wanted to sort of go there but about the branch as such i i was interested in mechanical engineering so my options were primarily like sort of to think about pa bombay mechanical delhi mechanical kanpur mechanical and then um, but did not get kanpur uh, because of one mark so that time it was a bit of a setback but now that i look back i realize that uh, that's how sort of life is you do not really get what you were essentially planning it to be i chose kanpur because kanpur was just like 6 hours away from my home and it happened madras which was 48 hours away from home quite uh, far as such so that's that's primarily uh, sort of been the journey to i as part of your bio samyak you have said that you are a yes fellow and a gratitude fellow top 30 fellow selected across the world and you divanshu you have received an award from the prime minister mr modi featured in cnbc's young Turk. in Forbes LinkedIn your story in other media houses and have been recognized as a top 16 young entrepreneurs globally by Singapore International Foundation even before i proceed further i am curious how old are the two of you to have achieved so much was this part of your journey in iit or once you were done with iit madras that all of this started coming in? i think for both of us it was uh, all of this that we talked about was yeah, before we graduated it was until 2019 when we graduated that it happened oh my god which means you're like what 23 24 years both of you yeah like i yeah i, yeah, I just completed 23 okay That's huge achievement and Samya even you Yeah I'm 24 right now So both of you are classmates at IIT then No no we are not batchmates uh-huh. Dhanshu is one year senior to me Five year program he was uh-huh. in a four year program and so okay. we graduated at the same time How exactly your journey began with both of you getting involved and the birth of involve and where did the the entire thing meet at a point You seem to have parallel journeys but where did you meet I think some may could talk about uh, how we met and then I will talk about the journey of Pravya. Yeah. I think I don't know. I think Divanshu just messaged I think few of us telling that uh, he is thinking about something and that if you guys are free can you just come come to to his room. At that point of time I think three of us three of us just went to his room and he just briefed okay this is what the plan is as of now no other idea that we have. Would you would you like to be a part of it? I'm like yeah. Anyways, in first year generally um, in IITs we don't have much to do. It's generally to explore the campus uh, and to explore different 
uh, sort of clubs that are there i was not much interested in a lot of clubs i have seen them but i was not wanting to go there uh, it was something new which he was starting from scratch i personally thought yeah let's let's do it and the only i think condition he put that okay the summer vacation that we will have after first year the three months i think that is the the most precious vacation for us because just we have just entered iit and we have this fame to take out and go to our home and tell you okay we are into iit and all uh, and to tell the stories and everything and he told that he after first year you can't go to home you can you can go, go to home i think for 10 to 15 days but rest of the time we have to do a project in delhi but we are yeah i think i, I think i never had a doubt because i wanted to go away from home i, I didn't want to be as such there so like it okay, okay let's let's do that uh, we both met when i think it was it was the third or fourth day of my college i got a mail i think one one of the one of the thing that everyone tells us that you please see your emails very very carefully because everything comes there like if you miss out anything it is your problem so please make sure you to you see it so i was making sure to see the emails and uh, me my brother my brother has come to drop me there was some a, a mail okay, okay there is something uh, that uh, first and second year students are doing where you have the opportunity to you know train uh, or help other students from jawahar navodaya vidyalay uh, and that you will and i think uh, just for the perk of it they also like you will also get to visit pondicherry uh, and all i think that's a very huge perk so i was like yeah let's go it because i, I think in 11th and 12th during the preparation one thing that i i learned was that i'm good at explaining stuff to people uh, i can explain the concepts to people and that was, that was the primarily primary job i would say so i i went there yeah i i met divanchu in a cafe coffee day and uh, suddenly i think first thing which which cracked was are bihari because we both are from bihar i think that connection is just 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 the most amazing thing that we get over there we started our journey and within one year uh, divanchu was managing me so we got to know each other well and from there the involved journey started so yeah i i think the yeah, the thing was that uh... in my first year i myself had been a mentor like we had gotten some back when he came on board so and then that sort of year when i was, was in second year and he was in first year i was the manager of team so he became a part of my team after like sort of 3 4 months into uh, managing that uh, a batch of students that we had in jawahar navodaya vidyalay i had uh, the idea was initially to just get iit students to mentor those kids in 11th and 12th grade because we would understand how important mentorship plays in like sort of clearing uh, exams like they which are really long term sort of preparation uh, but what happened was there was some uh, teaching problem in the uh, center because of which i had to sort of restructure the team to not just mentor but also take classroom take classroom like we are proper classroom so when i did that and i also asked like sort of the 12th grade students to teach the 11th graders and solve their doubt so this essentially and this worked in the three months that teaching was not available to them uh, by a professor so it just got to me that uh, whenever there is a multi uh, sort of uh, learning uh, ecosystem available we can always leverage the students who have learned better to teach somebody else uh, because it gives more autonomy to that person and they feel more responsible while for the students who are learning they just get an environment that is more sort of friendly to them Right. And this was same similar the same thing that we are doing uh, at the IIT as well, right? We have seniors who are like sort of helping. So I thought that this is could this be something that we could try at in our school? Because in schools we have these uh, set of students for there, like K twelve is always there, right? So that was really the thought. Uh, I had talked to a lot of people. Uh, that time entrepreneurship wasn't really the crazy thing at that point in time because we were just students. Like I was in my second year. So we, I thought that okay. even if that doesn't work out at least we'll have some new experience that you would have tried because the internships in the first year are not really that uh, skill building sort of a thing so i had to so i wanted to build a team i had avanti people who were already engaged in teaching and some kind of training by this i have floated this to everybody uh, some make sure interest uh, another uh, sort of fellow pa his name was pradeep uh, he showed interest and we said that yeah like some make sense the only condition was that we'll have to spend our summer in delhi so delhi i we, i had the alumni school at the school is the asn senior secondary school and the principal was very supportive of the work that we were doing so i had pitched to her and she was like okay i'll give you the avenue to try out so we were like okay and uh, that was happened so uh, while the semester was getting over we built a team of about 15 interns from delhi itself who was willing who were willing to 
work with us on various parts of training content development branding and things like that so even though that was the project sort of thing that we were doing we were actually building an organization because there was a team who would do uh, sort of training and content there was a team who would do operations there was a team who would do branding and communications so things like that right and we had like sort of avnish samek and there was this another uh, colleague of mine uh, he was based out of pune and we had connected after like sort of 3 4 years uh, i mean he said that he was volunteering for social sector so just asked him that i am doing something like this would you be willing to spend your summer in delhi and he was like okay so his name is avnish and he's still with us he's one of the other founding members of him so we sort of uh, got on board and that's how really the journey started so yeah and that that's so I'll talk about the journey in detail probably a, a bit later, but uh, that's how we got together and get started in Bombay. Okay, and uh, a little about your award-winning project with your professor. What you started? Can you tell us a little yes, bit? Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, till the uh, couple of years in college, I did not do much of mechanical engineering because the initial courses that we have are not uh, mechanical oriented. I was primarily interested in product design and development. So, uh, in, there was a couple of college teams that I was a part of. I uh, was part of a founding team that planned to develop uh, electric racing car so we couldn't like sort of be make a lot of progress there uh, developed like worked on a couple of other uh, sort of smart uh, robotic projects in the final year uh, as a master's thesis like because when i was a dual degree program we were supposed to work on a project and i did not have interest in much sort of abstract projects so i reached out to one of my professors and said that so i am interested in building something tangible that can have societal impact as well do let me know if there is something Uh, my professor prabhu raj gopal who like we have worked together still uh, he had been thinking about developing robot for septic tank cleaning and he had worked with a couple of uh, folks earlier but the progress hadn't been really much so he said that okay this is a project that i have uh, personally close to my heart we can uh, sort of raise funds for it also if required if you want to give this a try you can do that so i was like take okay, a well and good initially i wasn't then that into the project because a uh, typical uh, college student mindset you complete it and then you have to anyway go away and like work on it more than there one of the design philosophies that i follow in any work that i do is essentially to work with customers or work with the stakeholders more than before because the kind of insight that you get when you work with them is unparalleled right when we were there for developing the product the first product that i built up to months i took it to them and they completely scrapped it they said that this is not going to work this is a toy and so i was like okay tell me what uh, it look like that was my first experience of actually uh visiting a uh, manual scavenging like where people were actually going inside the septic tank and getting the sludge out and let me like sort of just put it over here that it is actually illegal in india in 20 like it's been illegal for quite some time but in 2013 there was a clear law that stated that this should not happen till it goes on unabated because we do not have enough technologies to replace them right and there are a lot of social structures that are put in place that still let them do that like there are people who believe that uh, certain class of people are born to clean somebody else's stuff right so this is like horrible when i saw that i thought that we have made a lot of technical progress in other things how complex is this problem that we haven't been able to solve that yet there has to be something so that's how like i got more attached to this and uh, by the time i was sort of finishing college uh, was able to like completely develop and design a product manufacture it as well and when we showed it to them they said that yeah this is something that is closer to okay, what can work so that's how the whole thing came out and unfortunately we got a couple of awards won a couple of grants to actually uh, develop it into a commercial product so right now the progress is that we have a uh, like robotics company that we have set up for that primarily to develop robot for uh, water and sanitation space because that's something that i think is a very basic need for every human being in the country like the robot is currently undergoing field trials and we are scheduled to sort of launch it to the market by the end of 2021 so everything goes well all the best on that but now uh, getting back to involve when was involve born what was the reason for involve can you just uh, give us a brief yeah so uh, like i said in the previous part uh, the idea was to think about how students can really support each other right because uh, i personally always believe that there's a significant part of the learning that uh, we have from our peer group I think that's one of the reasons why I and Samek have very strong sort of alignment on this. We disagree on a lot of other things, but that's something that is the core for us to come together, right? Uh, so the idea was to actually get this done. What I thought was, if students in the schools can support each other really well, that would be fantastic. Because we always have certain segment of students in the schools who have learned well, and there are certain segments of school uh, students who need more help. I am not really much of a uh, sort of uh, advocate for tuitions because I think that. Students do not allow students to think independently, ask questions, 
and give that exploratory space and schools have their own challenges in the sense that teacher is so clear how amazing they are and we have a lot of amazing teachers they have limited bandwidth they cannot give individual attention to each and every child in the classroom so the senior peer group could be leveraged as that support system right and that's something that was a thought and my experience from avanti showed me that it was possible the idea was that let's just try a pilot project for that we did not have understanding about the like actual education problem in india we just kids like i was in second year some of us in first year we just wanted to do a project so summer of 2016 we went to delhi partnered with the my alumni school and had 12 students in summer who volunteered to teach 48 junior kids the idea was to pair one senior student with four junior students right and after two months of the work that we did we had really good insights what we learned was uh, the academics of the junior students could be improved well doubt being cleared concepts being cleared and there's a good amount of value addition for the senior students it's not just that they are giving time to teach somebody else but the clarity that they are getting the leadership skills that they are getting the responsibility is unparalleled the thought process changes and we had students who were able to talk about that we were like okay let's not sort of uh, end this so after we got back to college and obviously the other thing was that we got a lot of recognition as well like there were two national newspapers which covered us so we were uh, in the cloud thinking oh wow we have done some amazing work <laughs> back on there too and i think the, uh, from six, like after we came back so uh, i think august 2016 to april or may 2017 we were just exploring trying to understand uh, what is the education space what is possibility what do we want to do what problem are we trying to solve I think me and Samyak and other team members also. We did smaller pilots, went to a lot of competitions and conferences to really understand what was happening. And I, Samyak also led a pilot project in Chennai that we did. The idea was to get students from communities engaged in that. And then we continued. Our first validation came when in 2017 we got selected for a global competition in Chicago by Northwestern University. And I, I went there, and we actually won that competition with like. In a way, our wildest dreams we had not imagined. Like there were 43 delegates from 19 countries who had been selected. We had pitched about in war, and we won that competition. So that was the first validation that the, the one the problem that we have chosen is correct, and the solution, the way we are thinking about it, is also in the right direction. Like getting students as ambassadors of change, making them responsible to take care of other students, could really be a approach to solve some of the education challenges. Okay, one sec, one sec. So here, when you pitched involve and showed it as a project, how many students were there? It's the same twelve students with the four mentees. So we had two projects that we had done so far. Okay. Uh, so fifty, fifty-five students had were there from the yeah, Delhi project. Yeah. Actually, I think fifty to fifty-five were again there from the Chennai, Chennai project, correct? Yeah, are about that much. Yeah. Yeah. About a hundred. Who did you choose in uh, Chennai? A school because you were Delhi products. So you went back to your alumni in Chennai. How did you choose the school? What did Samik, you want to talk about that? <laughs> it was not the school actually. It was the community. Oh. Uh, because initially we were thinking that ki why will the school you know give us that permission and uh, if we go to a school it will be difficult for us because we don't know Tamil uh, as, as well. Yeah. So what will we say to the schools? So we wanted to do something in the IIT campus itself. So we told that. we went around uh, the campus adr vela cheri and all of that we reached, we went to very uh, places where like there were houses of uh, you know not not pakka houses basically uh, and uh, we went and we had few volunteers with us mm. uh, from iit madras itself who knew tamil so we mm. went and we told the parents that okay you will be uh, uh, you know studying at iit and uh, we we pitched it like that and that you will get to see the campus and all of that Mm-hmm. so uh, that was a main pitch which 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 uh, made parents mm-hmm. come to come to the campus so the uh, parents were from economically weaker section yes yes oh. so we found leaders and the learners both mm-hmm. from around the around the campus the mm-hmm. whoever were, were in weaker section of the society okay so and the economically told, weaker section is who you targeted uh, so around iit chennai means adr is around there and yeah. velacheri is a little that side Okay, so you chose kids from those two areas and found the mentors and mentees amongst those kids itself. Yes, and we did a weekend program so that okay. we can also invest time. The ha, parents ha, ha. have no, uh, you know, they don't have to think 
before sending hmm. the other volunteers who knew tamil uh, they can also invest time over here so hmm. all of those we thought ki let's do a weekend program and see how it goes okay okay wow brilliant hmm. so yeah so after that like we just we had presented that and then we won that so after that we were like okay okay let's will continue this part however we had not thought about starting it full time since that point in time the nudge to start it full time came uh, from one of the people that we had met in one of the competitions and they had come to chennai to uh, for some other official work uh, they run this organization called mantra for change uh, husband and wife duo santosh mohan and khushbu avasti uh, phenomenal people so khushbu they had come to chennai and we had a meeting I think we uh, yeah we had met in CCD. I think CCD is that place where we meet people and sort of get together. So uh, she liked the idea, and then she said that why are you guys not starting it full time? And I said that look, uh, the only thing that we have is the money that we have got from the competition, and that also has gotten spent in some of the operations that we have done. We do not know education. We are not earning. We do not know anybody. Like what what do we start with? And then she was like. Uh, She she said that any kind of education resources, the Mantra Project works in education. Uh, they work in systemic education. She said that she said that any kind of education advisory resources that you need, I'll give you up front. You don't have to think about it, right? Just two or three of you guys who are there, like some get started, and at any point in time, if you have need any help, we will be there to support. Okay. That was the nudge that they gave, and they also said that you come to our house in Bangalore. Uh, Stay for a couple of days. We'll discuss the plan, the way you think about the business. That, at that time, we had not thought about non-profit, for-profit at that point in time. She said that okay, they, that sort of seems nice. Uh, coincidentally, they are also from Gaya Bihar. So there's something about that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, your state that got you all together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we visited their place and we sort of found the idea really good. And we said that okay, uh, we still have two years to finish college. Let's try it. I'll uh, give our best shot for a couple of years. If we feel that it's not something that is our cup of tea, we will go back to anyway what uh, we would otherwise do. But it's worth giving a shot. That was the thing, thing that we took. We had Avnish uh, who was willing to. So Avnish was my fourth colleague who was the founding member. He was that time completing his masters in Pune. So he agreed to come back to Chennai and uh, leave his job and be the first full time member. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, so th- that's how we actually. Got started with involved full time. That was, I think, September of 2017. We registered the organization in January 2018, and that's how the full time journey started. So, is this Yes Fellow and Gratitude Fellow part of that award, or something else that Samyak uh, you got selected for? These two, uh, and no monetary incentive was involved in either of it. Yeah. It was just a, a, a something where you get trained or coached by certain individuals mm-hmm. to help build the leadership skills uh, uh, of me or mm-hmm. the entire team or whatever the need uh, entire is, uh, and to make sure that to refine the problem and in any sort of space if you need help, they'll support that. But there is no monetary aspect involved. So uh, now here. both of you are near completion of your graduation and i'm sure iit madras must have had the best of the head hunters coming to pick the brilliant students and uh, take them into corporate india how did both of you decide to go against it were you so involved with involve and decided that you're going to go ahead with the project which had more meaning and not take a corporate career yeah i i, I think uh, something similar on those lines Like I think for uh, me and some I can talk about him as well. Uh, did not have very strong fascination for a uh, pay grade or a kind of work. Like I had uh, did my internship with uh, Mondelez, which is a like sort of parent not for Cadbury, and the project was very nice. But I did not feel a lot connected with that. Mm-hmm. And we had a APPO from there. Uh, so there's something called pre-placement offer from companies where you intern first. So that I had, but I decided not to go ahead with that because I mean I thought that let's just try it. once even if sort of nothing comes out we have a good experience of starting something of our own and building an organization and a lot of people that we talked to they told that there's a value in uh, entrepreneurship because the kind of cross functional skills that you get is good enough like to for people to value it and so you can look so the thought was that if we so for me particularly if i who studies in the best college in the india country is not willing to take a risk who else can 
and that, that is really sort of something that i keep telling all my sort of juniors as well whenever they thinking about entrepreneurship ki we have a brand that will allow we us to get good jobs so even even if you just fail after one year you can put a failed startup in your resume and there will have its own value so it wasn't really a risk uh, for me i thought that uh, it's worth uh, doing and that's how like so sort of chose to go ahead with it okay and samyak was it similar for you as well um yeah i think uh, i never thought of i think same i, I never thought of going on a pay a high paying jobs and all of that mm-hmm. and i was just enjoying here mm-hmm. so i never thought of it as an option also mm-hmm. i think both of us even before placement we decided that okay there is no point of going ahead with that uh and uh, let's we wanted to explore this Uh, because the name we know that will always be there with us, so we can uh, use that to our advantage. Mm-hmm. I think I think the 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 two years of struggle in eleventh and twelfth <laughs> has helped us on on that aspect. Uh, and yeah, I think I think uh, because I think that there's a lot of support also from both of our parents. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because I think uh, my mom like told that okay, if you want to do it, just do it. Mm-hmm. My brother was a skeptical because he's a business. Man. <laughs> so he, yeah, he wanted me to, you know, take a job or uh, or if he's like, okay, if you're doing this, if you're earning well, then it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I think my my mom and dad uh, never gave a second thought. They're like, okay, if you want to do it, if you feel connected to it, please go ahead. I don't think we have any issues. So yeah, I think their support was there. I never had a second doubt towards it. I didn't want a very high paying job so there was no risk that I was really taking as the one she was said also I don't think it was a risk it was a very, I think most favorable choice for us I think going into corporate would have been a risk for us <laughs> I love that I'm going to come back to you on disruption and innovation which go together but more than that uh, I'm now curious on your social entrepreneurship journey both of you any one of you can answer when you decided to take the plunge into social entrepreneurship and uh, it was a kind of a big change making that you were getting into uh, you had already tasted a little bit of recognition so you knew your steps were safer compared to somebody who was going to start afresh after graduation what is it that made you you gave the name involved with something in mind or was it very simple because it was the involvement of the seniors and the juniors and the completely a project which needed each one completely in their involved so uh, it is exactly that like i did not have a name for this thought uh, the project it is like it goes back to the first project that we did right uh, the name was there before even the project started so i was trying to talk to everybody about what this would do and in all the conversation that we're using I was telling that it involves students to come together and learn from each other so when the logo that you see i think some max uh, like sort of thing is that logo involves logo so that has students connecting with each other to learn mm-hmm. and then we say oh yeah like that's what students are doing that should be the name of the organization mm-hmm. and i was also explaining to people and that's how the logo also came in so the logo and the name has remained the same since we started Okay so it's what formally you started this in 2018 or after college yeah. did you start it in 19 formally as an no, so 2000 uh, so actually september 2017 we started it full time where we had a couple of people who were working full time i and some of these people were still students hmm. and uh, yeah so it was 2 years before we had graduated from college okay that you started it yeah. and you still had the 2 years of the cushion that in case it didn't work out yes, after yes, two years yes, you yes. still get other choices but still you went ahead and what did you learn in the two years as students that made you believe that this is a project that can sustain itself and you don't have to worry about a corporate career so the respect to our learnings i, I the one primary thing that i got and that we both talk about is we do not take into account student interest a lot in the journey like uh, the thought like thinking about education from a student centric lens that's something that is missing like uh, when we think about the programs that are happening we have teachers we have system stakeholders all of that but we often like we less worry about like what does the student want we never ask them that question right so that was our biggest learning in terms of the sustainability of the program 
very honestly we did not know because a lot of things that we had thought about went wrong like to give you an example uh, initially we thought that we would be uh, self sustaining in the low income schools we got after like i think two months of work we got uh, i think there are like okay, people are celebrating but anyways we got our first uh, school the low income school and uh, we got kicked out after two years two months the, we were trying to do a lot of things and the school did not really like that intervention so i learned that like in business the first and foremost thing is to build that relationship for people to trust you otherwise you really cannot go forward right so these were a couple of things that we got one was about building relationship is the very important part and second was around uh, seeing things from a student centric lens okay samya anything else that you want to add uh, more more than learning i think why that confidence came uh, was because i think we could see kids smiling mm-hmm. we could see that okay if we are doing something and the students are liking it and they are you know they are looking forward to it i think that was that was i think that gave us confidence ki ha okay if the students are liking will somehow be able to crack it although uh, the the bangalore project that we were doing that also somehow like did not was not was not a very great success in chennai also the school that we were working was not a very great success hmm. so but we knew that okay there are few challenges which either we didn't think of it earlier it will come and like hey, this can be solved so we knew the challenges and we know okay, all of these can be solved so we like okay i think we will be able to build a better program uh, going forward there is no point of uh, stopping it stopping it here mm-hmm. that that would be the addition okay okay now going back to that question that i said uh, samyak mm-hmm. maybe you can uh, take this uh, when it comes to any kind of innovation there's always a disruption that happens okay so in your thought process was there a disruption that occurred the moment you got into this 2017 was when you said that you started involved by 18 19 the disruption in your thought process of getting into like i love the fact that you said getting into corporate would have been riskier than doing involved because it was far more safer for us but compared to the rest in your batch and uh, with people around you in your campus what is it that made you move away from the road normally taken to the road not taken to get into this space of social entrepreneurship because you know normally people say ah ngo okay so that means you're not earning any money it's all free how do you survive how did you handle it samyak and what did you tell yourself first to believe in this completely during that time Mm-hmm. i think uh, first of all a lot of my friends were praising me at least okay. uh, they were like okay you are doing something very very interesting and i think a lot of them you know used to tell that i don't know how you are doing but we don't have the courage to do it mm-hmm. i'm like okay i'm not doing something very fabulous i'm just doing whatever i'm liking but if it feels you amazing it's fine mm-hmm. so for me it, it was it was it was an it was a normal thing that i was just about to do you know a lot of my friends uh saw me i think with with respect and uh they used to tell that okay like the 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 path that you have taken is is somewhat very very difficult because i remember uh as as of niche and one more ashwini had joined us full time so we made sure that we are there in the office by morning 10 o'clock uh and that been between whenever our classes are there we'll go to the classes and we used to work till i think 11 pm 12 1 a.m. 2 a.m. also sometimes, mm-hmm. and we used to. I used to go back at that point of time at at, at in my in my wing, and they used to tell, "Oh, wow, you are coming right now." Uh, so I think all uh, that that gave me a lot of confidence. Second, I I believe that okay, if I'm taking a step, I'll just go toward it. I'll not. I just don't generally do not think a lot about okay, okay, if I fail, what will I do? So that thought process was never there in me. Okay, okay if I do not get something, because I think the I don't know how that positivity came. I think some with some some something in the past might have happened. But I was very positive that something good will only happen. If nothing happens, then I learn something. Because in the past, in the in the two three years, I have learned a lot of things into just managing people, uh, mm-hmm. into creating content, into just interacting with people who are twenty years, thirty years older to me, and they are saying, "Okay, okay, you are doing an inspirational job." <laughs> I don't know how do I inspire you, but okay, if you say I'll I'll agree to it. So I think all of all of those things. just just said ki there is no point of going anywhere else just just take this ahead so i did not have another road to me i just had this one road 
so just took that okay now i want you to explain a little more samyak uh, you uh, are speaking about 2017 when you set up with 55 children 55 children delhi chennai in chennai it was not a school it was a community that you got together now when did the project start taking those giant strides wherein you knew now that it's a feasible project you were making a difference and you could gain the confidence of people because to get local people's confidence is an important challenge and you are not localites of course you had your uh, friends from iit to help you but uh, for them to see the model as a workable one and not with any other intent there uh how did you take it to the next level you just spoke about content creation so what kind of content were you creating what exactly was the model the plan of this entire project called the involve i think our biggest was that so in terms of local validation uh, I, i just wanted to narrate the story so when abhishek left the job and came back we were all excited but what we realized was none of us spoke tamil like all of these three were hindi speaking people right yeah. so uh, we were looking for volunteers to help us in tamil and then there was this uh, girl uh, ashwini who volunteered to work with us in the weekend because she had a full time job in uh, the weekdays and after two weeks of working with us we were having this conversation again in ctd uh, where she uh, proposed that she would want to join us full time oh wow. and i said that uh, see look i pay, I, i don't even pay me to an extent that he would be able to survive by himself right now and we do not have any income source uh, as such so i was going to get a uh, sort of stipend from college and we used to take some tuition as well so i said that i can match what abhish was getting he was getting i think 8000 or something per month mm-hmm. i asked her what what do you make right now she was like she was like yeah fresh out of college she had worked for one year so mm-hmm. she earned like 3 to 4x of that but within a moment she agreed to sort of get into this mm-hmm. right and that came as a strong validation because before that we had never recruited anybody somebody Like completely out of the uh, the initial sort of set of people that we had, I had agreed to come up with us full time, leave her job, and work with us. Mm-hmm. That was very important validation. Then, like sort of, we worked with her to work, go to schools and pitch our model. Mm-hmm. And then in one month itself, we got our first uh, paying school. Okay. Right. So that was another sort of thing that went. Mm-hmm. Though we got kicked out of the school after a couple of months because of all the things that happened. But the thing was that uh, this told us that the model sort of. there's a need for this problem right and the things we had to work out the success of the work that we were doing came from the school that we had partnered with and the summit will tell more detail about it and the model is kendriya vidyalaya iit we had signed up a partnership with them and we did that for like a couple of months before so the model had changed that now we would actually not doing vacations or weekend we would actually do it as a part of the school program so either the last period of the school or the in uh, after school students will uh, stay and uh, teach their juniors to solve the doubts and the bridge their learning gap so this was really the model and i think some could they should talk a bit about how the our kv experience was the the principal and the the coordinator their vedapati ma'am they both were very very supportive and they wanted to also try you know something something new so yeah we we took we we did an orientation with i think 300 400 students in a big auditorium we told them that okay you know uh, we will be selecting some of some of you students and then you will have to stay back for two days in a week and then you will have to teach your learners so a lot of 11th graders started uh, coming out from there and they are like okay yes yes uh, yes anna uh, will will love to you know uh, do this i think th- there came a lot of again again that i was telling that okay the the confidence in kids was there their happiness was there which which we were like okay if they are ready to do then why can't we yeah. so they told that okay we'll be willing to stay back for an hour mm-hmm. uh, i will tell our parents that okay please come mm-hmm. one hour later because i think the, the good part was that the campus was very safe mm-hmm. because it was inside iit madras yeah. so there was no problem mm-hmm. a lot of students you know there trusted the school a lot first mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Second, they were from very nearby communities. They are either students of professors or mm-hmm. somewhere from nearby only. Uh, mm-hmm. So all of these played a very good sort of part for us. And there we saw a lot of success. Where, uh, like one of the story which which I still remember uh, is that one of the student leaders she she was suffering through fever mm-hmm. and uh, 
she didn't come to school that day mm-hmm. and there was a involved class day mm-hmm. uh so after the class was generally their classes mm-hmm. gets over at 2:30 pm mm-hmm. so i saw her at 2:30 i'm like okay okay now you are coming and uh, i thought she's coming from the class i'm like mm-hmm. okay you you can take your class mm-hmm. and then after after one hour of teaching one of her friend told mm-hmm. her okay why didn't you come to school and mm-hmm. then i was also very shocked okay what happened if she was not mm-hmm. in school then why did she come mm-hmm. then we realized, okay, she just came for involved that day and she told that you know uh, anna if i would not have come then these students would be waiting and that i would not feel very nice about it and because these students would be waiting for me mm-hmm. to come so i had to come even though i had i had fever i am okay i can teach them at uh, in this one hour mm-hmm. don't don't worry about me i think that was a huge uh, motivation for us that you know students can even take such a huge jump where they will miss out their school but they'll come for this that that's how touched they were uh, from this program and f- f- uh, to the entire team so i think yeah i think that that story i think tells a lot of things yeah. about all the student leaders and the learners everyone everyone enjoyed and i think we finished <laughs> it very very nicely there no that it shows how much of uh, difference they can see they are making in the space that they are operating right yeah. so and when you know that there is a purpose and somebody else is getting something out of your presence i think it kind of motivates without any words okay now for the skeptical part of it for those skeptics who think ngos uh, are free for all the people who get in there should be doing it when they retire when they reach superannuation in their corporate life if and uh, they want to retire then they do meaningful work youngsters getting into that space come from privileged backgrounds so for these kind of people who make such remarks devanshu do you have something to say what an ngo is all about and how does it work the larger aspect of ngo is just the development space that people are in my personal take is that uh, the problems in the development sector are much more complex than the problems in the like sort of just the business and consumer sector because the context changes with uh, demography geography and like it's just whole lot different that's one second the scale of the problem is enormous the way we talk about market shares in business startup in uh, like development sector you cannot really do that because just look at education that we have right the low income population that is there that's like 200 plus million the biggest non profit that exists today in education which is like pratham has solved for less than 5% of the problem mm. so so that is really the interesting part to me where i think i think of like non profit or social space not as something that you are just doing for uh, charity it's like giving is always early one thing but primarily to solve problems and leverage innovation there right that is really the key interest and that's where i think that much more talent needs to come into this sector than is seen right now like youngsters should come there to uh, make this a part of career like there are definitely challenges this is an emerging space just like 10 years 20 years back entrepreneurship was a very emerging space so this sector is also that emerging for eu but i think this is a short worth taking that's one second you do not not earn anything as such right uh, there are funding models available to sustain a non profit uh, you can you can so social enterprises can either be uh, sort of uh, hybrid models where they have a uh, social wing and a business wing as well we initially operated through that manner but later after a year we changed to completely philanthropic in nature because uh, of other operational challenges that we had so it just that uh, for a particular customer customer that you are targeting right that person is not really the, your uh, payer the payer is somebody else yeah so we raise money for that to a various philanthropic foundation and we get paid for the work that we do definitely not at the competitive rate that other do but it's enough for you to success in and become better i think like, so we have been able to do that really well now the challenge came in 2019 is when you both graduated and 2020 was when the world graduated into taking a very different look at life itself a little virus taught us what is important about living what is desire what is need what is basic need and what is anything extra over that everything moved virtual and uh, your plan how did you make it sustainable in the virtual space because you were catering to different uh, communities in the social sector 
how is your model up and running in this most challenging phase of the pandemic from 2021 Yeah, we we have uh, three programs that we were running uh, again completely the bits and pieces we have done before but it was completely revamped and you know made into into an online space mm-hmm. one was the the core program that we work on is the peer teaching where a student teaches another student mm-hmm. we moved it into completely online mm-hmm. and we saw i think some something much more beautiful that we would have seen in an offline space because in an offline space we do it in schools the school is accountable and your teachers are there and uh, all of all of that is there to keep them coming in an online space no one is there so it really showed us that okay the students really believed in what they are doing and that gave us uh, us a lot of confidence so that model was completely up and running uh, and we have worked with around uh, 400 to 500 students till now where one fourth or one fifth of them were leaders and the rest were uh, learners the another program that we were running was to just make sure to engage the students uh, at this point of time make sure they are doing well they are interacting with their family and you know they are learning certain skills as collaboration communication uh, storytelling and others other other sector so we started a learn from home where we have a pool of around 140 activities uh which which can be given on a daily basis to the student and it requires just 45 minutes to 1 hour for them to complete okay. and there also we saw that okay students were really enjoying doing activities because uh-huh. these were something yeah. away from their academics yeah they yeah. Did not focus on their academics because i think it was march 2020 mm. they have their their mm. academic year was ending so they wanted to do something uh different so that also was a, a good hit mm. uh third which we were doing which was a completely entrepreneurship based program mm-hmm. where uh we were making we were because i think we have learned a lot through our journey mm-hmm. about entrepreneurship and we want want because in college we get certain exposure we wanted that exposure to go in even to a school level mm-hmm. because, because i think students have that curious mind a lot they are still not into that herd mindset okay if my mm-hmm. friend is doing that i'll do this mm-hmm. their mind can still be shaped and they can still be told okay what what is the new thing that are there mm-hmm. so we started a entrepreneurship based program it was a two weeks program mm-hmm. where one week they will be taught some theoretical skills mm-hmm. another week they will be mentored by people from iits iims mm-hmm. and all mm-hmm. and then they will actually build their own company and they will pitch it in front of mm-hmm. some key people that we have Uh, mm-hmm. so they will get a sense of you know theoretical knowledge they will pitch they will understand ppt making presentation making they will understand pitching uh, uh elevator pitch is what we told them uh, to make so all of those things were there so these are the three programs that is uh, uh, running yeah and for this uh, online is good enough like anything else yeah, yeah. good yeah. awesome i was just sitting here and thinking that at 24 if you people have seen so much more of life it life is all about the way you're living and you both are living such meaningful lives because i i can recall richard branson who said once a change maker always a change maker but only a few swim against the tide and you both definitely are doing that and doing it very powerfully and beautifully so individually i become greedy now together maybe six takeaways what is it that life has taught you what is it the pandemic has taught you if you can give me three takeaways okay the first one would be i think i think it might be common also so it might get reduced to five is is the is the value of relationship and value of people that has helped uh, uh, us the entire organization sail through like it is like okay we if we are facing certain challenges we know there are certain people already there to help us out people who have experienced 20 30 40 years who are executives of different big big corporates so i think people and relationship are the 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 most important uh, part because you learn a lot from them you learn very fast from them the the advice or i don't know i, I what whatever it is but the idea is to you know really hold the relationships very close to your heart and nurture them uh, always and take care take care of people as people and not as uh, just uh, okay, if if the need comes i'll go and ask not like that 
that would be the first second uh, which is which is a lot of mentors have also told us and again part of the pandemic as well where be ready to completely change yourself we were very sort of adamant about the idea and all of that but nothing nothing was working in pandemic so be ready to relearn unlearn at any point of time see it from the eyes of beauty if you see it from the eyes of okay now i have to put an extra effort then okay you will feel always like that but if you feel wow this is something new let's 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 see how how it will go so if you go from a very curious mindset uh, which which is something that i love when i think kunal kunal behel says a lot that uh, people should be really curious so you should be curious about new things curious about how it will span out how the new things will span out uh, that will be the second uh, thing third would be which is which is more recent i would say which is something that i have also sort of gone through and i have also faced certain hardships but a lot of mentors and all have told that just is it's going to be okay it's going to be okay don't be very very hard on yourselves uh the situation is bad the situation is uh but things will become better eventually so just uh, uh be okay with whatever it is see what you can learn from it uh take help on and take support from people and uh things will become better and one advice i'll give you at the last for the iit thing that you told <laughs> uh, that why why a few so many iits and upsc aspirants come from bihar yeah <laughs> devanshu you can go ahead yeah i think uh, so like some have said uh, the first one was common so i think we have understood very well uh, in the whole journey but i'll still give a yes three sort of separate i came up with other one so i, I think uh, one thing that has helped me a lot is allow yourself to try things and fail and the basis of this is that you don't have to be right all the time we fret a lot about uh, this is not working that is not working and that's absolutely fine like nobody is sort of expected to be right all the time so just forget about things if things go wrong and start right again I, like i cannot even count the amount of times that i've thought about something and it's not worked out second uh, that's something that is a basis for all the sort of uh, work that i do with people is trust I think that trust is paramount. So whatever you do in life, ensure that you build things on trust. Whether it is uh, relationships, uh, partnerships in business, friendship, anything that you do, trust should be a core aspect of things because that allows you to uh, sort of be honest, be transparent, and build on things. Otherwise, the foundation that's the foundation of any uh, thing that that's there. And the third thing that I personally believe in a lot is giving back. that's something that uh, has uh, will systemically come from my mother in small small ways uh, but i think that's uh, very very important like and it is not only really about like specific people can give back everybody can give back in their own ways and we can always do small small actions that uh, that allow us to do that okay uh, yes samya i'm waiting for your tip on uh, the secret of bihar <laughs> uh I think one thing that uh, I have realized uh, in this is from a very recent web series that I have been watching, TBF Aspirants, and the very latest episode that they talk about that. Do you have a plan B? I think a lot of people from Bihar they are so much motivated and so much want to achieve a thing because people really look down to us in in different in different because Bihar as a state is looked down. people here do not have a plan b people just have one thing and they just will make sure that they achieve it and they'll not come back without achieving it. and that's why i think a lot of people who from bihar who go from different who go to different states and all they make sure that they achieve and then only they come back so awesome no, powerful do, do not have a plan b <laughs> so never have a plan b if you want to be an achiever in life wow <laughs> that's another bonus take away for us your dream you have now touched 3000 plus students of government schools of tamil nadu and karnataka and plan to touch a million in the next 5 years well i'm sure if you continue with this zest and complete giving the universe is opening its arms to give it out to you there with everything moving virtual i think touching globally will not be a challenge at all today 
and for such beautiful work i can put my hand up and say if there's anything i can do to help you i'll be more than happy to do help virtually any which way i can send this message across and tell people what amazing young indians we have here and may you be the voice india needs to hear now and the voice that the younger generation can listen to to make a difference thank you so very much for giving your time thank you, thank you for having us here thank you for having us i mean we had a great conversation we really enjoyed it with that we come to the end of this episode of you and i with rashmi shetty do let us know your feedback and your guest suggestions write in to rashmi dot the third i at gmail dot com that is r a s h m i dot t h e t h i r d e y e at gmail dot com <laughs>